The week starts with hope that the Federal Reserve will give a strong signal for a September rate cut after Friday's data from the US Fed, the Dovish Fed narrative. The big technology stocks are obviously feeling the heat of the upcoming rate cuts from the Fed and the rotation vibes as a result of it. So they must not only meet, but also beat the expectations when they announce their earnings in the coming days. And well, four of the magnificent seven companies will be revealing their second quarter earnings as soon as this week. So welcome to a new week packed with data and central bank decisions with Swiss codes. Daily Market Talk. Well, there is a sense of hope in the market this Monday morning after Friday's PC data from the US boosted the expectation that the Federal Reserve is getting very, very close to signaling its very first rate cut by September. So the core PCE came in slightly, slightly higher than expected by analysts, steady near 2.6% level instead of a further easing to 2.5%, but, but the rest of the data was either in line or lower than the expectations. So the personal income and personal spending in the US well, showed easing and inflation adjusted PCE fell to 0.2% on a monthly basis. So all in all, the data on Friday was read as a green light for the Fed to I'll say that September is certainly a good time to start cutting the interest rates. So the US two-year yield sank below the 4.40% level after the data and remains under pressure in Asia this morning. The US 10-year yield consolidates below the 4.20% level and activity on Fed funds futures gives a 100% chance for a September rate cut with rising odds for a 50 basis point cut and two more rate cuts are expected before this year ends. Voila, guys. So that's where we are in terms of Federal Reserve expectations. Do those obviously dominate the market and the pricing in the market? The Fed will start its two-day monetary policy meeting tomorrow and will announce its latest monetary policy decision on Wednesday. If all goes according to the plan, a strong signal for a September rate cut should not make a big difference, mind you, as everything is already priced in and out. So the risk here is that we meet a slightly cautious Jerome Powell in which case there could be some scaling back in the Federal Reserve bets and maybe a correction as well. Also this week, the US jobs data will be closely watched by investors. Due Friday, the NFP number from the US is expected to show that the US economy may have added around 177,000 new non-farm jobs in July, for steady wages growth around 0.3% over the month and an employment rate steady near the 4.1% level. So this is what we will be looking for this week. For now, the US dollar index remains under pressure near its 200-day moving average level and hovers around a key Fibonacci support. The major 38.3% Fibonacci retracement on this year's rally that stands near the 104.24 level. So a decline below this level will, in theory, send the US dollar index into a medium-term bearish consolidation zone and pave the way for a deeper downside correction in the US dollar. But, but one major hurdle to a further US dollar weakness is the dovishness from the other major central banks because a Federal Reserve rate cut well, will increase the probability of well, further rate cuts from the major central banks like the European Central Bank and the Bank of England, and that could eventually slow down the bleeding that we might see in the US dollar globally. So in this context, the Bank of England is expected to announce a 25 base point rate cut when it meets on Thursday this week, and that's certainly why cable couldn't extend its gains above the 130 psychological level earlier this month and the euro dollar opens the week well near 108.60 level weakened by the rising european central bank rate cut expectations on soft economic data from the eurozone and also a disappointing earnings season for the european companies so this week will bring more earnings and the european inflation and growth numbers in focus in the eurozone inflation in the eurozone is expected to show a further weakness in the month of July, while growth of the Eurozone probably stagnated in the second quarter of this year.
In contrast with all these dovish expectations, the Bank of Japan is expected to announce quantitative tightening this week and even lower its policy rate by 10 basis points. So the Japanese yen is in demand these days against most major currencies. The dollar yen tipped a toe below the 152 level last week, remember, and is waiting for the central bank decisions to unfold near 153 and 40 level this Monday morning. The euro yen is offered below its 100 day moving average, and the sterling yen is testing the 100 day moving average to the downside as well. So if all goes according to the plan, well, meaning that the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England signal to cut or well, cut their interest rates and the BOJ tightens its monetary policy. The narrowing gap between Japan and the rest of the developed world should give the Japanese yen a further positive spin as well, the Japanese yen actually has ways to correct against the major currencies after being heavily heavily hammered over the past years. So the prospect of a tighter Bank of Japan monetary policy doesn't please the Nikkei, of course, of course, which is just this close to sinking into an official correction zone with losses past 10% since the mid-July peak and well, the worldwide technology sell-off that we see in Europe and in the US as well obviously, well, don't help keeping appetite in the case, well, well-funded. So speaking of that, Friday was a better day for the big technology stocks in the US. Round Hill's Magnificent 7 ETF rebounded 1%. But overall, well, last week witnessed accelerated rotation flows as capital left big technology stocks while feeding into the small and the non-technology pockets of the market on rising Federal Reserve rate cut bets and also disappointing earnings from Google and Tesla. Nasdaq 100 slipped more than well, 2.5% during last week and the S&P 500 closed last week 0.8% down while the equal weighted index for the S&P 500 rebounded 0.8% over the same week and the Russell 2000 stocks gained almost 3.5%. So a dovish Fed and weak economic data from the US could eventually accelerate this rotation trend so the big technology can only well, rely on their own earnings to slow down or maybe just maybe reverse the sell off. Four of magnificent seven companies in the US which are Microsoft, Meta, Apple and Amazon are due to announce their second quarter earnings as soon as this week and their results should not only meet but also beat the sky high expectations from the market and besides them other big big names will also go to the earnings confessional this week and among them in technology I see AMD, Qualcomm, Arm Holdings and Intel and in the non-technology we have companies like McDonald's, PNG, Starbucks, eBay and MasterCard and in the energy space ExxonMobil and Chevron will be announcing their second quarter earnings as well. So we have another busy week in terms of earnings to say the least we will be following all that until Wednesday because after that I'll be on vacation. But speaking of energy, well crude oil is better bid this Monday morning on mounting geopolitical tensions in the Middle East after having slipped more than 2% on Friday's trading session. So OPEC Plus will meet this week and the expectations on what they will announce to do is well quite mixed to say the least. OPEC is supposed to well, scale back their production restrictions next quarter remember but but the sluggish Chinese demand, the ample supplies from Americas and also well the easing energy prices right now increase also of a delay of that move. So if that's the case well we could see oil prices in a better shape by the end of this week so looking at the numbers key resistance stand at the $80 per barrel level for the US crude. So this is all for this Monday. I'm Ipek Özkardeşka and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. 
So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading. Thank you.